What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Logo and today we're going to be working with AWS Amplify Admin UI. Now we're specifically going to be covering the sandbox which is a graphical user interface or a GUI as the kids like to say and that allows you to build out your data models, build relationships between models, set the different properties on those models, and then once you're done doing all of that, you can pull those models down locally to your project and it will generate code, native code for you that you can start using in your app with the libraries. And then after all of that, I'm gonna tell you how you have a chance to win anywhere between 500 to $1,000. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So as you can see, we're gonna start off with an incognito browser. Now I'm gonna go incognito so that you can't see my browser history. I mean, so that you can see that this thing is completely free, right? All right, so first we're gonna head over to sandbox.amplifyapp.com. It's gonna bring you to a page that looks like this. We're gonna go ahead and create our app backend. So now what it will allow you to choose from data authentication or file storage. We're going to specifically focus on building out our data models today. And we'll start with a blank schema. We're going to start from scratch, right? And now what we'll do is we'll land on this, this blank canvas, right? So how do we get started building out our data schemas? Well, we have this little add dropdown right over here and it has three different options. You have your model, your enum and your custom type. We're going to go through all three of those today but let's start off with a model. Now, we're usually gonna have something like a user inside of our apps, so I'll just go ahead and create a user model. And now we can add all the different properties, and whenever we create these models, there's going to be a table that represents each of these models so that we can save them into um, either, if you're gonna work completely locally, then it'll be a data stores local table, or if your app is deployed, then you're gonna be actually seeing these tables stored in DynamoDB. So, we have a user and they'll have a name. Now, we that's the gun to be the name of the property, right? So we have like a property called ID or a field name, whatever. And then we have a property called name. And then we can see the type. So as you can see, there's a drop down from all different types of, that you can choose from. And then on the right side, you can actually uh, see a little bit more about the properties of that property. And um, you can see, is this required? Is this an array? And then you can click a checkbox. Now for a user, a name is required. So we'll just go ahead and click that. Now, something that might not be required would be like something like um, a catchphrase, right? So we would have a catchphrase and this would be something that would be completely optional, in which case we wouldn't have um, that is required marked as is required, right? Um, another thing that we might have on a user object is their creation date, like when was this uh, when was this user created? When was this user object created, right? So if I can learn how to spell, you can see that we have creation date right here, and that's not gonna be a string, that's gonna be like a AWS date time, which will give you the date and the time. Or if you're just interested in just like the day of, you could do AWS date, like that might be good for something like birthday. But we'll just go ahead and do AWS date time and that'll work. Now the creation date is probably also another field that you want to make sure that is required when you're working with this data model so that you always have um, access to that information on this user object. And then just to go over a couple of the different fields, we might have something like age and that would be like an integer. We might have, um, you know, weight. And when you're this heavy like me, you're going to want to put that on a float so that you can count every single pound or ounce that you weigh so that you know, the, the, the scale just shames you to death. And then another thing that we might want to have is like um, a, an array of things, right? So maybe you have like a bunch of nicknames and that could be something that would be optional, right? We wouldn't want to mark this as is required, but we could have a bunch of different nicknames and we could just store that in a simple array. There's no need to build out a whole entire different model object to store just simple strings. So we'll just have an array of strings, which works out really great. Now, the, the next thing that I wanna show you is how to build out your own, um, your own enum, because that's the next thing in our list, right? So an enum is going to be something that you can only choose specific cases for, and it's only from those different cases that you can have a selection from, right? You can only have a set amount of values. So one of these things that could be an enum could be gender. So 
Enums are generally going to be all capitalized when you write them in here, but depending on your language, they'll, they'll be translated to the proper formatting for that language. So as you can see, we have our different genders, female, male, and other. And sorry if I'm not inclusive enough, it's not intentional, it's just an example. And notice that none of these properties have like anything optional over here, like it's not an array, it's not is required, because a gender just has these simple cases. So now if I wanted to add a field to our user object, like gender right here, then what I can do is I'll type in gender, and then I'll go to the drop down, and now I can see that there is this new type that's available called gender. So now my user object can have like an enum case for that specific gender, which is really cool. Another thing that I want to show you is the custom type, right? So a custom type is is like it's similar to our model object, except there won't be a table created for it, right? So you might want to store some structured data but you don't necessarily want to have a whole entire table dedicated to that data because it doesn't really make sense to store that data in that way. Um, a great example of this would be to use location, right? So a location would have like a latitude. Let's see if I can spell these right. It would have a latitude and that would be of type flow. And then you could have like a longitude, longitude, <laughs> longitude, and that'll be of type flow. And actually this field we don't really need. So we have our latitude and we have our longitude and the location, it doesn't really make sense to have a table like that because you wouldn't usually want to do a reverse lookup on a coordinate. It's just kind of, kind of weird. Anyways, so we have our new location object and what we will do is we'll add a new field. We could call this location and we'll also have location in our dropdown as well. So we're already starting to do some pretty cool stuff. Now, I want to sh also show you another cool feature, which is the ability to build relationships between models. So we'll add another model and you can only have relationships to between models that have that are like actual models, not um, custom objects. Right. So another object might be pet. Right. And a pet would have a name and the name would obviously be required. So we have a pet and we want to say that our user has a, a pet or maybe even multiple pets actually. So we'll add a relationship down here on our user model. We'll say that the selected related model is going to be pet. And then you can see that we can choose like maybe one user only has one pet, uh, a user has many pets, which is what I think is the, the case, or um, a user may have many pets and pets may have many users, which is kind of like the reality of the situation. But like more realistically in an app, you're probably gonna have something that's more like this, where it's one user has many pets. So then you have your pets and uh, we'll rename this because I like to have it all lowercase. We'll re rename the relationship name and we'll save it. And down here at the bottom, you can see we have a relationship name called pets. It's um, related to pet and it's a one to many relationship right here. So you can see that under cardinality. If we go back up to our pet object, we'll actually see that a user ID property was added to our model and you can see that it's it's type is relationship source so this is kind of tying those two models together so we don't want to we don't want to modify this at, at all another thing that you might have is like a many to many relationship so if you actually do a new model and let's say that the new model is going to be community and a community is going to be like a name like maybe you're part of the i don't know the open source community or the the developer advocate community or whatever you can have multiple communities so a user could have a relationship to a community and we could build that relationship like this many to many right because a user could be in a bunch of different communities but a community a community could have a bunch of different members or users so then we're going to rename our relationship name to communities something like that i don't know if i don't know if i know how to spell but yeah Anyways, you can see that we have a communities property under our user object now, and we can see that it's related to by community and it's a many to many relationship. If we go up to community, we can also see the inverse relationship, right? Relationship name, users, it's related to user and it's also a many to many. So perfect, that's all we're gonna be doing in regards to building out our model schema. Now what we would do is we would go over to the test section we would select a platform. I'm gonna just do iOS, that's what I'm most familiar with. 
will do next. It's going to tell you how to get started and get this thing going. It's going to recommend that you open up and create a new project first. Then it's going to tell you how to um, pull down the, the CLI, the Amplify CLI, if you don't already have it installed. If you do have it installed like I do, then you simply copy this line of code and then you go into your terminal at the root of your projects directory, which I'll do now. All right, so here we go. We're in the terminal. I'm at the root of my project directory. And as you can see, if I do LS, it's just as simple as that. If I command V, if I paste it into um, our terminal, whatever that line was, and I press enter, it'll actually pull down the sandbox and all the, um, all the information that was created for me. And as you can see, I obviously need to update, but if I do, if I clear this and I do LS again, you can see that there's um, a couple of different files that were generated for me. And if I open up our project, and when I open up our project, you can see that under the, um, the Amplify config folder for iOS, this is an Xcode, you can see that it added all of our all of our relevant files in here. So um, the configuration files are going to be blank because I didn't deploy this, but we can also see like the schema. So we can see our community object, we can see the pet object, location, gender, um, the user, and then there's the, since we did a many to many relationship with user and community, what it actually does is it combines these two objects and creates a single object called user community. And you'll be able to see that it has a one-to-one -one relationship with the user and a one-to-one -one relationship with the community so that this is the thing that's going to actually make it so that you have those relationships tied together is this object. So this is just going to be the GraphQL type schema, but what we are actually interested in is the actual native code, right? Because I want to see this in Swift code because that's what this project is in. So what I'll do is I'll add files to my project. And if I go over to the Amplify folder that's at the root of my directory, go to generated, go to models, I'll actually see all the native models that were generated for me and I'll add those to my project. Now, when I go to look at something like user, I can see the native implementation and how to interact with that specific model. And you can see like all the different properties that we specified, whether they were optional or not, or I should say required or not, right? And then you could just like kind of see like all the different, um, the different things. So gender, we can jump to the gender. We can see the different um, possibilities. We can do location as well. And we'll see that we have the, the latitude and the longitude, which is really cool. So, so that's pretty much it. That's all I really wanted to show you in regards to the Amplify admin UI and how to get up and running with that awesome GUI, right? Like as the kids say. Now, I did mention that there is an opportunity for you to win anywhere from 500 to to 1000 bucks. So if you actually head over to Hashnode, and you take a look at this hackathon, I'll actually leave the link in the description, but you'll see that we are actually hosting a, ampl um, a hackathon and it is sponsored by Amplify. All you have to do is work with Amplify and you know follow some of the guidelines and you'll be able to participate in this awesome hackathon. And you can see that the prizes right here are five grand prizes of a thousand, 10, um, 10 runner ups of 500, right? So easy way to make some money you know you do something fun you get something on your portfolio you build out something cool you even who knows maybe you even make the next big thing um with with your hackathon project and then who knows who knows where it could go from there right but anyways this is a really awesome hackathon so if you're if you're interested in getting started with a hackathon uh it the hackathon doesn't end until February 28th. So you still have a good amount of time to actually enter and have a chance to win. So that's going to be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions about, um, you know, Amplify admin UI or Amplify in general, feel free to reach out to me, whether it be in DMs or in the comments. Um, all the links will be in the description below. And then you can also reach out to me or anybody from the Amplify team on the Amplify Discord as well. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you for your time and go out there and keep coding passionately.